What is up? What is going on, everybody? I am back here with the Mariners post-game recap for their 1-0 loss this afternoon to Toronto, to the Toronto Blue Jays. Before I get started, if you're enjoying these, hit the like button. If Or if you're not subscribed, hit the sub button. If you're subbed, hit the like button. If you're not subbed, hit the like button. Um, if you're not a Mariners fan and just like my videos and want to support the channel, hit the like button. Um, it all is very much appreciated. So thank you to everybody that's done so, so far. If you didn't see last night, um, I did not have a post-game video up. I was on with Rooftop Mariner. Go check out his channel. We did a collab live stream after the game, talked about the game, talked about the Robbie Ray injury and the new City Connect uniforms as well. So go over to his channel. Um, if you go to my community tabs, um, I mentioned it there. So go check out his channel and sub him up as well well three and nine in one run games oh and five in extra inning games oh and six oh and four I, I don't even know anymore the Mariners lose to the Blue Jays one to nothing they dropped to 11 and 16 on the season um they somehow managed to waste Easton McGee who I'm not gonna lie I didn't know who that was before today um I know who Emerson Hancock is I know who Bryce Miller is I know who Brian Wu is is it Bryson Wu or Brian Wu? So I guess I don't know him that well. Um, I know who Tommy Malone is. I know who Chris Flexen is. I didn't know who Easton McGee was. And he comes up and takes the spot of Chris Flexen, who has moved back to the bullpen. Um, Shannon Dreyer was saying they're just working on some stuff with Flexen. Probably smart, you know, just from a confidence level, to get Flexa out of the rotation right now. So Easton McGee comes up. And they don't get blown out 10 nothing. In fact, McGee has six and two-thirds of no-hit baseball against one of the better lineups in the American League. Ends up six and two-thirds, one hit, one walk, two strikeouts. Um, clap for Easton McGee. Just from a human element of baseball in his first major league start, that has got to be so cool. He deserves a good night's sleep tonight, and I hope he does sleep well um, because he showed up to play today, and he tried to get the Mariners a W. You saw when Scott took him out, he talked to him a little bit. Um, and the pats on the back he got from his teammates. That was a well-respected outing for McGee. He has earned himself another start. Now, do I think Easton McGee is the answer to the Robbie Ray injury? Probably not. Um, I thought early on he was giving up some hard contact. Um, two strikeouts, one walk isn't amazing. But he did his job and got out, so it was certainly better than what Chris Flexen has given the Mariners so far. Um, I'm not going to stand up here as an Easton McGee fanboy and say that this is the answer. But I don't really care as long as you're getting out. So, you know, McGee's going to fall in that category of guys. I don't care what his FIP is, his ex-FIP is. Just get me out, and you're, I'm cool with you. Um, and he did that today. So kudos to him. Like I said, just from the just from the human element of baseball, very cool for him. He's got to be proud. And from helping the Mariners in a game that going in against Kevin Gosman, I would have given them no chance at winning, essentially. Easton McGee gave this team a chance to win. Um the offense, Kevin Gosman is really good. So, like, and he's a really bad matchup for the Mariners offense. I didn't expect them to score eight runs or anything against Kevin Gosman. I, I, I didn't. Um, and Gosman was phenomenal. Seven innings, six hits, one walk, career high, 13 strikeouts. The Mariners did put some pressure on him early. They had first and third in the first inning with one out. Don't score. They had a runner at second with nobody out in the, I don't remember what inning it was, when Julio singled, stole second, didn't score. They had first and second, I believe in the second inning, with two outs. And for some reason, on a 3-0 pitch to Julio, Tom Murphy is picked off second base. Like, what? Why? How? I, a few weeks ago, Gino got picked off against the Brewers. It was a 3-2 pitch. It, I was a little more sympathetic to it. Like, Tom, what are you doing? I get Julio is the green light. There's two outs. Like, come on. I, I, and it's those little things that... Do I think that's the reason the Mariners lost the game? No, it's just the little things get compounded when you lose. So it makes it more frustrating to talk... Or makes it easier to blame that. It, that's not the reason they necessarily lost the game. But you were fighting so hard to get some of these wins. And, and really... Like, and Tom Murphy, like, come on, like, uh, what are you doing? He's probably trying to get a little bit of a lead because he knows Julio is the green light. He's not a fast guy, but oh my gosh, just, just frustrating. And, and the offense just 
Yeah. Nothing, just just nothing from them. And Julio leaves with an injury. Looks like lower back tightness. I don't think that's going to be anything that's going to like, to you know, keep Julio out for a long period of time. But may keep him out tomorrow. May keep him out for the Oakland series. So I, I don't know. Hopefully, I think he'll definitely keep him out tomorrow. Um, and then we'll see what happens. You know, the rest of the way. And that injury hurt them because in extra innings, runners at first and second, two outs in the tenth. It's AJ Pollock up to bat. And A.J. Paul kind of sucks right now, and he struck out. And, you know, everybody in this lineup today just terrible. Um, you know, Tom Murphy, two hits. Uh, he had the terrible base running mistake, but two hits and did a nice job calling the game for McGee. I guess he was okay. Julio did have a hit. I, it's just frustrating. And all the games that this team won um, in the last two years, it's like the baseball gods have decided that now they are going to lose. Every, not only are they not going to just be average in those games and take a step back, they are now going to lose every one-run game, every extra inning game, because it's just they're not allowed to win these games anymore. They had their time and their luck or whatever you want to call it, and now it is going to go not just like a regression, but it is going to go 180 the other way, and they're going to be the worst team in one-run games in all of baseball. And it does matter. They're 3-9 and nine in one-run games. I think they're 0 oh and I'm going to go through the extra inning games, so stick with me here. There was the Cleveland game in the first series on Sunday. The Guardians game with where Matt Bar Brash blew it in the ninth inning. They lost the Cubs game um, in extras. The Brewers had a game in extras. And then today, so they're 0-5. Oh I mean, make this team 2-3 in one run games like make them two and three and they're 13 and 14 it's just frustrating it's just it, it, i'm not asking for this team to still be like last year they were 34 and 20 in one run games i'm not asking for that i'm asking for a team that's three and nine to be five and seven or six and six in these games um with that said with that said about kind of the bad luck a little bit this year it's not all that either. They're not playing great baseball. They are not. Now, their offense, the offense wasn't good. You could say the Blue Jays' offense wasn't good today either. But they're just, they're, they're not finding ways. You know, like last night, yeah, they lost a one-run game. But they had a chance early on to knock Manoa out of that game and have five, six runs on the board. They had an opportunity to do that. So, they it didn't need to come down to a one-run game. That They had chances. And I get it. Like, Manoa's good. Gosman is good. These guys are going to get you out more often than they are not. But, you see, you know, they found a way to knock Manoa out in the playoff game last year. They can do it. They, they are capable of it, and they're just not getting – they're just not hitting right now. And, you know, the pitching – and, again, you, like, I, you wasted the George Kirby start two days ago. Castillo wasn't great yesterday, but he gave you enough to probably win the game. Easton McGee like, went out there and shoved for you today. And, nope, he gets a no decision. I mean, George Kirby and Easton McGee in two of the last three games have pitched a combined 14 and two-thirds innings, given up four hits, two walks, struck out nine, given up one run between the two, and they are 0-1 with a no decision between the two of them. I mean, come on. Like, you're not going to get these starts all the time either. And that's what's frustrating. Like, yeah, I think the offense will get going. I don't think this is like the 2010 offense. There's a lot of talent here. This is, I have seen way worse and way less talented Mariners offenses trotted out there than this. But they're going to get going. And then Easton McGee ain't going to be giving you this all season. So you got to win these games. You got to find a way. The bullpen was fine. Brash did his job. Topo was good. Seawald was good. I got gave up a hit, and I mean, I, I truthfully, I guess it would have been worse than a one-run game if it kept going because I think Varsho hit it over Teoscar's head, so it probably would have been like four to nothing if it was, you know, if they kept playing and the game obviously, you know, stops when he scored the run. I, I'm not gonna blame Trevor Gott. I mean, it, 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 that's a tough spot in extra innings when your team doesn't get you a run. Not much you can do. I, I thought taking out McGee was okay. I didn't have a problem with it. Um, especially with the lefty and VAR show coming up. Listen, it, it, I, I, the pitch count was 64. I get that he hadn't thrown a lot of pitches. 
I don't think it was so much a worry about the pitch count. I think it's just, is Easton McGee really that great? What's a better option there? Uh, Matt Brash or McGee to get Varsho out? I think Brash is the better option. I had no problem with Scott taking out McGee. Yeah, I would have been okay if he decided to leave him in there too, see if he can get through seven. But, you know, it, we're not in the season where it's about letting the kid try to get through seven innings. Like, in August, if you're out of it, then fine. Like, if this was August 10th and the Mariners are 16 back, then freaking let Easton McGee try and get out of that. I, you know what I mean? See, see, what, see what the kid's made of. But we're not in that position yet. The goal is to win the baseball game. And, and I think that was the right decision um, to bring in Matt Brash. And and Brash did get the strikeout. And, you know, like I said, this, this game's not on the bullpen. This game's not on the pitching staff. It's on the offense. And... It's just, it, it also goes back to other losses. Like, I'm not mad that Kevin Gossman shut this team down. Kevin Gossman, like I said, is really good. And he was on his game today. And he settled in and pitched fantastic. The Blue Jays' bullpen is really good. Romano's great. Pop pitched well. We know Swanson's really good. So, like, it, it, it's not like the Blue Jays are a team you can just expect to score 10, 12 runs against. But they could have beaten Matt Strom on Thursday. They could have edged out a run against Strom. They could have added a little bit more against the Phillies bullpen in that second game, the Taiwan Walker start. You know, so and the Mariners have not won a game since Robbie Ray has been announced out for the year. I don't think that's why. It's just they're, they've lost four in a row since the Phillies win, 11-16, and 16, and, and they're now going into tomorrow uh, facing a good pitcher in Chris Bassett. Marco's been really good, but, you know, the Mariners probably the underdogs in that game, and there's a chance you're not going to have Julio in there tomorrow as well. You are off Monday, then it's off to Oakland, who is scoring more runs than the Mariners right now. Um, listen, frustrations aside, it, the Mariners are 11-16. and 16. I think they have a minus one run differential. It might even be zero. I'm not positive on that. They're, they're not a bad baseball team. They're, they're, they're not. L losing one-run games like this is not a sign of a bad team. It doesn't mean that they're perfect and everything's just going to be fine. This is they have some flaws, and when Julio's not able to play, and you know Chris Flexen goes from serviceable to really bad, you don't have Andres Munoz and Robbie Ray's out from the year. It, it that all not helps you know to knock you down a peg, and then you factor in that they're not getting a lot of bounces. They are too, like and and you can sit there and say Jay, that's you know. You can't blame it all on luck, and, I, and I'm not, but they have been unlucky. They, they have been an unlucky team, and you cu couple that with not being great, and, and it's it's a bad recipe, and that's why they're sitting at 11-16 and 16 right now as opposed to maybe 15-12 and 12 or something like that. Um, it, it's certainly not – I'm not going to say it's not panic time. It, 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 excuse me. I'm not going to say it's panic time. It's not. There's definitely some worry. You know, we are – 27 games in here. We're, we're getting out of April, the, and the team is a loss to Toronto away from being six games under 500, meaning they're going to need a pretty decent win streak or, or a really nice, you know, 10 and 3 run here to get this thing back going, which I think they are capable of. I think this is going to be a streaky team in general. I thought that coming into the year that they'd be streaky. Um, but. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna need a decent win streak now to get this thing even just back to five hundred. So certainly not time to panic. I, w I would not panic. Toronto's really good. This has been a tough schedule. I will add that the Mariners have played a pretty tough first twenty seven games. Um, they do get Oakland coming up now. I will never, if you watch the podcast with Rooftop last night, I joke that Oakland scares me because right now the Mariners just don't feel like they're really gonna beat anybody. Uh, but Oakland is not a good ball club, so you can maybe get some wins there um, and then get home and hopefully, you know, bust out the City Connects and, and get some Ws here. But uh, a disappointing loss, as they all are. There's no non-disappointing loss. Again, a loss that, like many of these, in, in a vacuum, I wouldn't have much of an issue with it. If the Mariners came into this game 14-13, and 13, I'd probably go, yeah, Gosman shut him down. But this team's needing some W's, so it just makes these, it, it just makes it a little extra frustrating. Um, you know, I'm not really going to go through the lineup. It, it just, yeah, they, you know, nobody really did anything today. That they, they need to be better, um, and hopefully face some worse pitchers too. That that will certainly help as well. Um, but yeah, this is a team right now that's, 
you know, it's sort of everything. Last thing I'll say here is it's sort of everything is not going their way. They're, they're not having great injury luck. They've lost one of their best starting pitchers. Um, and probably their best reliever has not pitched in three weeks. I think he should, Munoz should be back for the Oakland series. They've lost a really, really good utility man in Dylan Moore, um, who definitely, I think there's just a lot of scenarios where he would have been a huge impact. He hasn't played yet this year, and I don't know if and when he is. Um, you know, and now in this game, you know, Julio had to leave with the back spasms. Does Julio get a hit in the 10th? I don't know, maybe not. But I would certainly take my chances with Julio Rodriguez over A.J. Pollock um, getting a hit. I'll defend Jerry and Justin again here. Today wasn't about necessarily like, you know, people again criticizing the depth of the rotation that they had to go down and get Easton McGee. I mean, first of all, McGee was good. Second of all, yeah, like they don't have eight stars. That's why the Robbie inj Ray injury really sucks. Um, Julio getting hurt stings. There is no replacement for Julio. There's never going to be. You have the best depth in the world. You're not going to be able to replace Julio Rodriguez in the lineup with anybody remotely close. It's going to have to be your, your best bet is a Pollock Trammell platoon of some kind. That's what most teams have to do in those situations. And today wasn't just the bottom of the lineup and, and Jerry's additions this year struggling. It was everybody. You know, nobody did anything. Um, it, it was like I said in the loss to Philly. It's not an issue of Tommy LaStella being bad. It's an issue of n nobody getting hits. Somebody's got to step up. You know, Jared Kellenick's had a great season. He had another hit today. Like, it can't just be him. Somebody else needs to drive ball. We're, Gino, come on. Put one into the gap. You know, Ty had a good at-bat and pinch hitting in the 10th, worked a walk. Um, you know, it's tough because you don't want the bat. It's almost one of those situations where you don't want a guy to walk because I didn't want Pollock up there. But you, you can't swing up all four. You know, Tay Oscar, come on. You know, it, Cal. I mean, Cal was good yesterday. So, I, I don't know. Frustrating. I'm certainly not giving up on anything yet. We're 27 games in. There's 140, no, no, 130, oh my gosh, 135 games left, 134, something in that. My math skills on par. So certainly not time to give up or panic, but definitely this team's got some kinks they need to work out. Um, kudos to Easton McGee. Uh, great start by him. Hopefully, maybe he is. Maybe he's a hidden gem. And, you know, he can take that spot in the rotation. I'll be back tomorrow with the post game for the series finale. I will have some Seahawks draft talk up tonight. We'll talk about the rest of the picks they made. I'll talk a little bit about uh, as much as I know. I don't know some of these guys they took today. But what I do know, we'll go over. And, yeah, that'll be it. Thank you guys for watching. If you made it all the way through, I appreciate it. Sticking with me. Hit the like button. Hit the sub button. And I will see you guys all later. Hope you have a great weekend. Go Mariners, and take care, everybody. Peace.